Hey guys, this is Reza. I'm back with my oldest cat. Her name is Sherzat. Uh, she's chilling with me right now. She wants some pet pet and some love. Um, in this video, <laughs> not to waste your time anymore, I'm going to talk about containers. And containers are important. Last video, we talked about components. These are things that the user could see or interact with, such as a label, a J label. Remember the Js? Uh, we, we did a few text fields, buttons, and so forth, so on. Now, the containers are just as important as the labels and these other components that you see. The containers allows you to put components inside. And even more than that, it allows you to put not only components, but also containers inside. So why would this be important for us? Let me grab my little pen tool here. This is really important for us because sometimes we require, let's say for now, we haven't talked about layouts or anything. Whenever we add any object, they're kind of taking the whole space. Well, if you did the layout set to null, which makes an absolute position, well, now we're allowed to put things at locations, right? We specify those locations. But what's even more interesting is we could make more complicated uh, objects. So let's say, as an example, our button is kind of regulated for being a button. Uh, what I mean by this, it's always going to be this little square shaped with a text in there. But what if, rather than making a button, we made a container that acts like a button, and in this case could take two images. So let's say an image here, an image here, and some text here. And whenever we add this object, we're not adding a specific button, we're adding a container that contains multiple things and it will interact as if it's a button. What I'm trying to say is we could combine many things into one singular object to make it more complex and so forth, so on. That's one thing we could do. Another thing we could do is also place these containers, which uh, will deal with, let me put this camera back now that my cat's gone, which will deal with managing the items inside. So, in a moment, we're going to talk about uh, the next video. We're going to talk about more about layouts. But what if we separated our screen into two, right? As an example. And on this side, the buttons will be placed, or the contents, the components, sorry, will be placed one by one, one after the next. And on this side, they'll be placed inside of this format in a grid format, right? And we could do that. And this is the purpose of containers. So if you could look over here, we got our top level container. In this case would be like a J frame. Uh, we could, th there's a few containers, okay? There's frames, um, there's the window one. Um, and there's a l last one. These are top level containers. And they do a bit of different things. And you can see here, we're kind of utilizing the J-frame already. But to be honest, in our course, the only ones we're going to focus on is the J-frame and the panel. Okay? So let's go a bit further before we, we dive in into this. Uh, the J-frame over here, we got a top level. And now inside of that, we could add two panels. Right? We could add another panel here. And inside of those two panels, we're going to add those components. And depending on the layout we utilize, they're going to place everything for us. And this becomes really useful. Okay, so this is an important thing to understand what is a container and what is a component. Because a component cannot have uh, another component inside. It can't have a container inside. But what's interesting about uh, containers is not only can they have components inside, they could also include containers inside. So we could keep changing the format of what's, what's inside, right? It doesn't have to only be J buttons and so forth, so on, components. It could be also a panel, which is a container. Why is this possible? Well, we just need to kind of go up in the levels. It's kind of a, let me clear my screen for a bit. It's kind of like a polymorphism. We're going to talk about that later. But it's kind of like saying a J frame is a frame, is a window, keep going. And now look, the window, or in this case, we could just say directly, the J frame is a container. 
But what's interesting is a container is also a component. So a JFrame, not only is it a container, which has more features, but it's also the component base class, which has that default features that a button has and all of those. And we'll talk about this more as we go further and you'll understand this, uh, you know, this extension, we, we should already kind of understand it, but being all of those, we could add it to each other. So just remember that a container could contain components, and it could contain a container because a container is a component. It's a bit weird and whatnot, but we're going to get used to it as we go forward. So just remember that there's a few containers that are important for us. The first one being what our app is being made of, JFrame. We're not going to talk about the window one. Um, the window one is to fully customize how the window looks and feels. So we're going to skip that. And the second one is containers inside the JFrame where we're going to add categories or locations such as uh, panels, right? We'll add the panels. In the next video, we'll talk about layouts, which is going to help us position them so we don't have to do these bounds, which is kind of good, but it's time consuming and could be problematic if the window size is not what we think it is, right? Remember again that if the screen size of the user is much smaller, these still going to happen and they're going to go overlapping outside of the screen. So this is important. I'll see you in the next video where we talk about more uh, layouts. See you guys then.